Welcome to Superior Heights for this junior football action between the Cora Colts and White Pines Wolverines. I'm Tony Bonifero, joined alongside Jim Monaco. Jim, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, what are your expectations coming into this game? I think you got an up-and-coming team in the uh, White Pines Wolverines. They've got a lot of talented players, but, uh, you know, it's a it's a tough task when you take on the uh, Cora Colts, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens today. Let's see if they're up to the challenge, right, Bono? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had uh, we, wa we covered the Superior Heights and uh, White Pines game, and White Pines, with their first victory since 2012 over the Superior Heights Steelhawks, so... You know, obviously they have a little bit of momentum, and that's nice for the program. Jim, you and I have talked forever about, you know, the importance of having that fourth team in junior and senior. So just uh, what are your thoughts on White Pines picking up the big win last week? Well, I thought it was great. I mean, I, I like what White Pines is doing. I, you know, a lot of, we both know a lot of the guys on that staff, and uh, they got some really good uh, enthusiastic coaches, uh, you know, and I think they're, they're going to do the work to turn it around. So you know, I like what they're doing. They got great. Right. They got a great 11s practicing with them uh, with the junior team getting ready for next year. So it looks like they plan on going forward with a senior team next year. So uh, that would be fantastic. And like I said, I really like their coaching staff. I like the guys they have there, and uh, I think they're those guys are up to the task of, of getting it going and making it a successful program. Now, Cora Colts, obviously, Cora has been the strength of this junior division for the last few years, and you know, this year they've come out and. You know, manhandle teams pretty easily. What are you looking to see out of today uh, from the Cora Colts as the kickoff happens here? Well, I think Cora's going to do what they do, right? They're going to they're going to run their system. They're going to use their athletes, and we're going to go from there. Yeah, and speaking of athletes, there's one of them as Hunter Dickinson with a big return Dixon to the 55-yard line. Hunter Dickinson, Dixon one of the better players in this junior division here, and Cora will take over Dixon first down and 10, 10 from midfield. Yeah, Hunter Dickinson's a really good player. I had the, pres the pleasure of coaching him this summer with the uh, Junior Sabercats. He's a really good athlete. Uh, you know, he was new to the game last year, and he had a really good year in the high school season. And he was a starter for us as a great nine on the uh, JV Sabercats, too. And now uh, he's one of the better players in this junior league. No surprise there. Cora lines up in the traditional offset formation. Sloss at quarterback. Sloss hands it off to Gazzetti, and Gazzetti is gone, probably for the touchdown. <laughs> and no surprise at all, Nathan Gazzetti takes it 55 yards for the score. Yeah, he's a little bit of a handful <laughs> to handle, uh, Nathan Gazzetti. As we saw there, he got a little crease, and he just took it, uh, used his speed, and uh, point after away she went. Uh, you know, I, I always say that with uh, with Gazzetti. Is, is one thing about him is you, there's a lot of fast guys around the city, Bono, as you know, and uh, not everyone can play fast. That's right. And uh, he, he's, a, he's a really good player that uses his speed, and he's, he's pretty much unstoppable. So he's a pretty special player in my mind. Yeah, what he does, it's, it's interesting, right? Because like you said, Jim, he's so fast, but even on that run, there it was almost like he was picking and choosing when to be fast and then when he needed to be he was gone you know <laughs> yeah and he got he got through the hole Absolutely, first right and, yeah. and he got his secure yards the yeah. yards you need to get and then he got the extra after just yeah. by using his speed so uh it's a nice run and uh good great start for the uh for the colts not a great start for the white pines yeah. but i think they know they got their hands full with gazzetti absolutely one thing that we didn't see a whole lot of last week from the cora colts or we haven't seen it much all season yet is their passing game they've really been hammering home the offensive you know the running game which is what they're known for and that is their game that being said the you know the fact that they have a player uh, like um like marquis strawbridge starting at wide receiver you know a six three kid uh, there's not many people in this league that I think can stop him if they can get single coverage on the outside. So I look for Marquise to get involved in this game, you know, early on in the uh, in the first quarter. That's for sure. Yeah, we're, we're kind of like Marquise is a luxury they really don't yeah. need, kind of <laughs> in a way. I mean, they, they're going to need all they want. Exactly. But they're going to need all their weapons, but they don't really need him uh, to run their system and run their offense. But yeah, he's a he's a big guy, a special athlete too. So we'll see yeah. where he goes from there. So, Jim, don't, just talking about this core team a little bit more, I mean, there's you look at some of these grade nines that they have, you know, players that we're pretty familiar with from the Sioux Minor football season. Just talk a little bit about uh, about guys like uh, Cam Williamson and, um, you know, yeah. Cohen Menchelenko yeah. and Peyton Melchiori and Aiden, yeah. Aiden Wanch, like those yeah. four particularly. 
Yeah, those are four, four of the best players in the Sumac Once Football again, League, right? Uh, a, lot, a lot of talent, a lot Teacher, of, uh, District you know, they'd start on a lot of other uh, other yeah. high school teams at running back, right? Chief, and then, Chief you know, referee, uh, the referee Chief. they got Gazzetti, who's the best player in the league. and so they're, the, they're, uh, But they'll, they'll bide their time and uh, – they, they do a good job of making sure everyone gets touches, and you know when they get when you get up early, it's the, it's uh, it's a luxury too. You can play some more guys. Uh, they're also gonna have a little bit of a time uh, too, Bono, when uh, Gazzetti goes away for uh, hockey. He's missing a couple games, so yeah. uh, other guys have to pick up the slack. And I think in for their program, that's good for them, and I think they can win without them. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now, looking at this White Pines team, we're just having some clock issues here at uh, Superior Heights. Looking at this team, you know, guys like Garen Pine last week who played exceptionally well for them at the running back position. Um, you know, Neshoba Moore, who we know, yeah. Nick Laudit, a good basketball player. Uh, the McCorkle, yeah. Ethan McCorkle, was unbelievable last yeah, game. Steve, Steve Nolan Day was really Steve good. Steve Nolan uh, Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I saw saw some big, nice plays from the big man there, uh, Wayne Jones Reed. Yeah. You know, I, I was uh, doing the PA last game. I wasn't on the uh, yeah. with you, but uh, yeah, they got some good athletes. They, they they do they. I think now you know you got a uh, you got the young uh, young uh, Will Baswa there teaching there. Uh, you know he'll he'll be pounding the halls and making sure all their athletes uh, are are going to come out and play. They do a real good job of that. You know I think they're going to build something good there. And uh, I agree with you. I really li- I was really impressed with Garen Pine athletically. Yeah. Uh, he's a guy that will re- try to get out and play uh, with the SaberCats this year. He didn't. He's a he's a baseball player too. So okay. uh, he's a busy guy. But uh, we'd like to get him out. Uh, you know Neshoba Moore, who played with us this summer, was one of one of our better players, the starting corner. Really good athlete. He's got a uh, He's got a good attitude, and he's a hard-working player. I really like him. So, uh, you know, they, they got a lot of talent. And, uh, you know, like I said, they're, they're probably in tough today, but – uh, you know, they got a chance to compete in, in this league, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, absolutely. And just looking at this, too, there was a couple other kids from Sioux Minor that I know I co- – well, Joel Shea is a big lineman, a uh, lot of potential. And you know what, Jim, I mean, you, you coach long enough and, and you understand the importance of having linemen, right? And, you know, and uh, and Joel Shea's a, a big kid. He's a, he's a strong kid, and he's really powerful on the line. And uh, I think Ball that's going to be a huge asset, around? too, Ball for these guys, any? which is nice. And uh, yeah, you know, a guy, another guy I'd yeah. like to Bono is uh, and uh, is Keegan Dane. Keegan Dane played, yeah. played for us this summer. He didn't get a lot of playing time he, as a grade nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but on the line, it's kind of tough. But uh, you know, he put his time in, and and uh, the coaches from White Pines were telling me before the season started that he had really grown into uh, you know his spot as a player and 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 had developed a lot and had gained some confidence from uh, from the summer. So. Uh, he, I thought I saw a lot more from him than 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 I expected. So he looks yeah. like he's really coming around. So that's nice. And uh, Daniel Moore too, obviously the running back, DJ yeah. Moore that we know from uh, from this summer as well. So lots of uh, good players on this team. But one kid that really I think it's Daniel Pine or Daniel though. Pine. It does say sorry, Moore, on our Moore but it is Pine. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, one thing. One kid again. I kind of mentioned his name earlier. That who really caught my eye in week one was Ethan McCorkle. He was playing all over the field, making tackles. Um, you know, I'm excited to kind of see him. He got a little shaken up there last game, but hopefully he's okay out there. Is that he's a he's a nice player? Yeah, he runs that little end around, uh, that's that right. little, little shovel pass, and uh, he he runs that very well. Yeah, I agree with you there. There was uh, I'm trying to find his name here. There was a player who ran late in the game. He was really late fast in the game. Oh, yeah, I, I don't see his name either. I don't I see know him exactly on here. Talking yeah, about, but I'm, he uh, I was already looking for that. Yeah, coach, coach, uh, coach Baz was telling me that he's very new to football, and that was his uh, – crawl. I think it's Austin Crawley maybe. I'm not, yeah, sh- I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not anyway, sure. He was really fast. He was really fast. Made a nice the first run. time he carried the ball, he fumbled. And That's then right. And then, that, next, yeah, then he had a touchdown, yeah. 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 So he was – coach was really excited by him. So, and Jim, well, while we have a little break and play here, I know you have a big game against Superior Heights tomorrow. Uh, you know, you had a tough one against Cora last week. Uh, just kind of talk about – your St. Mary's and the and the senior team, and just how uh, how the week of practice has been. Well, I think it's been good. We have to refocus our goal. You know, we, we kind of got a little a little hyped up for Cora, and uh, maybe we were too hyped and too excited, and came out a little bit nervous. So uh, uh, we talked about that at practice today. So hopefully, we can come out and uh, you know execute a little better on uh, on uh, tomorrow night. But uh, you know, obviously, it's a different task, a uh, totally different team, totally different yeah. offense. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we're excited, and it'll be nice to. Uh, Get back out, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can we can get a victory. That's uh, 
we, we've been talking about that a little bit, how, uh, and I, I talked about it in the paper, uh, you know, we don't want any more moral victories. A lot yeah. of people came <laughs> up to me and said, oh, yeah, you guys you guys won the second half and stuff like that. Who cares? I mean, honestly, yeah. it's nice to show that we could play a little bit, but at the end of the All day, right, at the end of the day winning the second half doesn't get you anywhere, Bono. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely, and that's what I was going to say was, you know, point. you guys did. It was Looks an up-and-down like game, but I think, uh, again, I think that was it, right, the emotion of that game. And you guys, you know, you guys still have a, a fairly – I mean, you have a veteran team with, with a lot of players, but you have young Maddie Tucker at quarterback, and I actually thought Maddie Tucker played except, played very well once he kind of settled into the game. I felt like he started off a little nervous, but, you know, once he got going, he threw a beautiful ball. So looking Pick forward to seeing uh, how you guys look court. tomorrow, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we should be a fun team to watch anyway. Yeah. Well, we're not, uh, we're not uh, ground and pound. So exactly. Much, you know, and uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. That's yeah. just, just our personnel doesn't, doesn't suit that. So, uh, yeah. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. Hopefully we perform well. The extra point is good. It looks like we got the clock issues kind of sorted out. I'm going to apologize early. I do have to duck out around uh, 6.30 tonight. So I'm going to be leaving Coach Monaco on his own here. And these little delays probably don't help <laughs> to help the fact that yeah. Yeah, they keep it going a little bit longer. But Yeah, and I'm not exactly a play-by-play -play yeah. guy, but I'll, I'll do You'll my do best. your best. I'll do my yeah. best, so... Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, Jim, one other thing, you know, obviously Huron Heights is coming to town. Uh, there's a, been a lot of talk about this team. Can you kind of explain to people who aren't too familiar with Huron Heights what's so special about these guys and why it's such a big deal that they're coming up here? Well, they're a very, very highly regarded team in the uh, in the province. They uh, they have a really good program. They run uh, they run like a flex bone offense, triple option, and uh, they run their system and they live and die by it. You know, kind of like Cora does with their yeah. with their uh, wing wing T now. And uh, uh, you know, they got some they've got some couple big players, and they're supposed to be a really big team. Uh, yeah, I think I think will be interesting. I'm glad they're playing Cora before us, yeah. by the way, so <laughs> I, I get to see a little bit of what to expect. Exactly. And, uh, you know, they're they're kind of here back to back weekends, so uh, you know they they have a hard time finding games, and you know I'm a, number two, uh, Nixon Blair to we'll kick We'll take the off challenge, and like, uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, you know I think Cora will give them a really good game, though. Yeah, I think it's really cool that they're coming up here. I do. I know that uh, Looks like you know the they're one of the stronger teams in the country. And so Nicholas load it to receive for and Cora. Cora kicks it off, and it's taken there by Pine, Pine or sorry, that's not Pine, that's uh, Moore and Moore. Breaks a couple tackles the on this. Makes a little return. Nice run back and he gets it up to the 42-yard line, we'll call it. White so Pines White over. Pines will be going right to left here with 11.33 to play in the first quarter. Cora with a 7-0 lead. Garen Pine will be under center again Tackle here for, for the Wolverines. Yeah, uh, so for so for White Pines, they got to do what they do, right? Just, just stick with their stuff, run their quarterback, run their inside uh, stuff with uh, Pine and uh, – you know, uh, just stay with their game plan and, and at the beginning, and uh, hopefully that works, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's all you want. I mean, you know, you would have to think even picking up a first down here would be huge momentum for these guys. And there's McCorkle. Speaking of McCorkle, and McCorkle with a decent little run to the outside, but he fumbles, and somehow the ball stays in bounds. I'm not sure how that stayed in bounds, but it did. And unfortunate break there for the Wolverines. Matthew Poulin recovers the fumble for the Colts, and they'll take over first and 10 from the White Pines Wolverines 47-yard line. Yeah, uh, interesting note, though, Bono. I do not see, uh, I do not see Garen Pine on the field. I, I don't know if he's not playing today. Or, I, or yeah. I missed him, but I know McCorkle took the snap from center. And I uh, saw that too. I thought yeah, I saw him so. walk out, but maybe I didn't. So he had a decent run there. He he, he had probably about six yards, and yeah. then he got pulled down from behind and uh, the, the fumbled the ball. And uh, like you said, Bono, uh, just the. <laughs> Uh, crazy bounces kept the ball in, in play, and uh, so. And if you know, and if you notice, Jim, he had the ball in the inside hand, not the outside hand, which led to the fumble. So, yeah, I don't like <laughs> that. <laughs> That's, you'll, you'll hear Jim and I bicker about that quite a bit. But <laughs> nice, uh, nice defense. Cora, there. yeah, Cora with a little counter. That Looking carry was num carry by number, number twenty nine, Peyton Melchiori. Yeah, and a nice, nice defensive Medithi. play there by uh, Arthur Vincent, I believe. Yeah, you know, Arthur Vincent played a nice game Vincent last game uh, yeah. last week as well. He was another kid that really stood out. But I think that was Melchiori that made that run. So um, he has a little bit of a, a little bit of a broken play in the backfield yeah. too. Sorry, so. twenty nine on the carry. And, and Melchiori, as you and I talk about, his burst is incredible. I mean, that you know, he run, he goes from you know Since zero to sixty in no time. So. 
you know, it was a good move by White Pines to get him there. And there's the pass that we talked about early on to Marquise with a oh. one-handed grab. And he beautiful. takes it to the house. Beautiful pass. Number 11, Marquis Strawbridge. He holds I mean, it was, in. Yeah. That was actually really good coverage by, that was. by number 29, uh, Chris Cormier. Out, uh, he just got, uh, you know, he's just not 6'3 like yeah. Marquise, and Marquise made a one-handed catch. And uh, Marquise is always gonna, also going to get a penalty for uh, spiking the ball, so uh, I'm sure the coaches will address that. Uh, yeah, and you know yeah. what, though? Knowing Marquise, uh, <laughs> you know, he does play with that emotion. He spikes the ball, but, you know, took the penalty, but he did go get the ball after for the officials yeah. too, right? I think yeah. he realized what he did wrong, but that was just an unbelievable catch by Strawbridge and kind of we talked about that just before, you know, that they might look to him early on. But really, Jim, how do you stop that? Oh, I'm, 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 I was just going to ask you <laughs> yeah. the same question, yeah. Bono, yeah. because, on because you can't really put take too many guys out of the box <laughs> because they run almost every down. Yeah. And, uh, if you want to double them, it's going to be pretty tough. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. was, uh, and you're right. The coverage on that play was nice. So it was just that's a heck of a football play and nice one-handed catch by uh, by Marquise. That's Better for sure. Yeah, that was Chris Cormier on the coverage who, was, <coughs> who played for us this summer too. He's a nice player. Like and, a uh, he's got a lot of talent. But yeah. No, no, no. Like not many people awesome. could cover that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you, Bono. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But and you know what? Uh, give Sloss some credit too, because that oh, nice play by the Wolverines as they blocked that kick. Snap but uh, low, that was a nice throw by Sloss. I mean, he, he put he put it to where only his player could yep. make a play and put the ball up and let your athlete be an athlete. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So. And the depth at, at quarterback that uh, Cora has is 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 Scores fortunate to say the least. To you know, they got Bryson Sloss as their starter. Um, you know, I can't remember who their backup was, but their number three quarterback was, is Zane Murdoch. And, you know, Zane was a pretty good football player and, you know, would have an opportunity to at least be a backup on numerous teams in the junior division, if not start. So, um, again, that's just uh, the embarrassment of riches that this Cora Colts team has uh, in terms of talent. Yeah, so we played 202. The, the Colts have run two, three plays on offense yeah. and have scored twice. And, uh, I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah, you just got to move on to the next play for the that's Wolverines. Right. That, that's you know, uh, we preach that a lot as coaches. Uh, the the most important play is the next play. So you got to kind of just go, put that behind you and go from there and uh, keep playing ball, right? Yeah, and you know what, White Pines, their first play, they did pick up five six yards on our yeah. little run to the outside. Just you know, hold on to the football, right? And if you can get four five six yards every play, you're marching. So um, you know, it's not all lost here for the Wolverines. As the Colts line up to kick, again, it's Laudit back for, or sorry, it's uh, Moore back for the Wolverines. As Blair, I believe, will make the kick as usual. Oh, sorry, it was Gugliera. And he kicks it over to Laudit. So Laudit grabs it at his own 20. And Laudit has a little bit of room. Whoa, look at the wheels there. What a burst by Laudit. And he gets out to... Just Brent past the 45-yard line. Back. Yeah, real nice run back What a there. burst that was, Jim. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a good athlete, Nicholas Loudon, so. He's a, heck of a, he's a heck of a basketball player, that's yeah, for sure. Like that, yeah. I, called, uh, I called quite a few uh, White Pines junior basketball games before. last year, and I didn't even realize he was only in grade 9 last First year. So the fact that he's in grade White 10, um, you know, I know we're calling football here, but I'm looking forward to seeing him on the basketball court this year too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, so. Let's see if uh, who's out who's out at quarterback here for. It looks like you're right. It looks like it's McCork. Well, or oh, there's that pine there, maybe. I think that's 19. Yeah, that's Garen Pine. Yeah, yep. Garen Pine with a run to the left side. Defended well. Number 19, Garen Pine. He's brought down by number 87. Aiden yeah. Wanch. He's yeah. stopped by number 87 48. and 48. Ethan Sorrell. Ethan Sorrell was a player Eight last week, Jim. Set up second and 11 who I don't want to say I don't want to say kind of came out of nowhere, but he, I mean you could argue he was the best lineman in the game last week. He made about five or six tackles. He was running all over the place. He got some runs at running yeah. back even, and like yeah, he, he, he he's he's not out of nowhere for me. I coached him this summer. He had a little bit. Of, he has a little bit of. Uh, a he had a bit of, of an uh, injury a though. Bit of yeah. A, Health situation yeah. that held him out of some games, but he was a starter for us, and uh, he's a very aggressive team. Loves football, so yeah. that's the that's the best thing about him. Daniel Loves Bryant football. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, a Dallas Cowboys fan, though. So well, I know, I know, but yeah. that's yeah. all. That's that because of his dad. Yeah, so. that's his dad's, <laughs> that's his dad's fault, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pine with a nice little pickup there for the Wolverines. He's able to gain three yards. yards, so it'll be third, third down, down and ball. seven for the Wolverines. 
White Pines coming out in the shotgun. And they're doing that little shift again. Oh, yeah. And there's McCorkle in the backfield. And there's tons of blocking there, but it's brought McCorkle down. What it. a play by number 87 again. Backfield. Aiden Wanch, I believe. Or was that uh, looks like number 88. 88, sorry. Diego, Diego Campagna. Diego Campagna. Yeah. Fourth down. Yeah, Diego Campagna. Uh, he's got some good bloodlines. His, brother, his, his uh, uncle played the football at the... At uh, Carlton, and uh, uh, we coached uh, his brother, his brother too, Dante. Oh, Dante is his brother. Yeah, yes, yeah. I coached so, Dante and, too. And, uh, yeah, Diego was a AAA hockey player, and yeah. uh, now he's decided to uh, throw his hat in the ring in football, and uh, looks like he's pretty good at it. Yeah. Wait, Pines back to kick. Moore back to punt for the Wolverines. Show Moore to kick. And Moore with a nice beautiful punt. punt, and it's taken by Gazzetti. Oh. Gazzetti feels it. Bobbles it. And he takes a knee. He slipped down. Basically yeah, takes yeah knee probably a, that's, that's the best case scenario the there for the Wolverines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Looks like maybe he needs to get a skate sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah beautiful yeah. play there. So it'll be first and 10 for the Zeddy Colts from their own 25-yard line with 7.43 to play here in the first quarter. Nice day here. It's uh, a little bit windy as the wind's blowing left oh, to right, yeah, but... It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I just got off the practice field uh, myself yeah. uh, at, at St. Mary's. Uh, maybe it's a little – I don't know if it's colder there. It's cold, it's cold here too, but yeah. it, it, it was cold. We're out of the wind a little bit we're up here, wind, so yeah. we're covered a, a bit. But And, and uh, when there are kids out there. We're, 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 we're not, so. Oh, for sure, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. As Gazzetti runs hard up the middle, outstanding tackle by number 16. Gazzetti takes the ball off the middle. Cameron Wynn. Able to Looks like tackle by do what not many people win. can do, and that's tackle Gazzetti. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, Bono, last week, I, I didn't have, we haven't talked about this yet, though. I actually thought that uh, St. Mary's Knights did a decent job in the junior game on defense. Yeah, uh, against, they absolutely uh, did. Uh, yeah. Against Gazzetti and the, the Colts. So. for Cora. Yeah. Which is good for the league. For sure. Yeah. The junior team played with them, you know, if they could get their offense going. Nice hustle there. There is a flag on not the sure play. Not sure game, but there is a flag on the play. It'll be it number twelve, Alex Verpeel. I'm not sure. I think they got the first down, depending on the flag. By the way, I think it's going to be against. Uh, uh, it's on core or. It's it, was that a mouth guard warning? I think. Bob? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so I think it's just a mouth guard warning. So, so it'll be a mouth. Yeah, first down and ten for the Colts. If you get what is it, two mouth guard warnings, it's a yeah, penalty, I right? So, yeah. 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 I learned that I learned I learned more about mouth guard warnings this summer coaching in Sioux Minor than uh, I ever had before. So, yeah. yeah so and here comes the Colts. First and ten, Cora. Two wide receiver set here. There's a fumble, I believe, on the play, and Ball it's dropped off the snap. The Wolverines are acting like yeah. they recovered it. The officials are talking. White Pines is pointing pretty adamantly, but the refs haven't made a call no, yet. it's horrible. Oh, okay. So it is recovered by the Colts. Recovered by Corbin. That'll be a Three loss seconds. of one on the play. Second down and 11. Be a nice first stop here for the Wolverines. Oh, yeah. But, uh, tall task. One player who really tore it up last week for the Colts was number seven, Nathan High, and we haven't seen him get involved too much yet, but Gazzetti with another nice hard run up the middle. Gazzetti Outstanding with a good run. job by the White Pines defense, led by number 18, number 18 Nicholas, Nicholas Laudit. Yeah, that was not that was, that was Melchiori. Sorry, Melchiori with the carry? Melchiori. Oh, Melchiori. Okay, yeah. yeah. One thing we saw in the summer with Melchiori, uh, uh, he's, not a, he's not a big guy, but he Routed runs, he runs really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's not afraid of contact afraid either. Of contact, Three. Uh, That's, I love the way he runs. He's, he was one of my favorite. Oh, he was. He was one of my favorite running backs I've seen in a long time. I just, if you don't touch him, it feels like within the first five, six yards, you may as well just give him 20 because okay. of how hard he runs. I heard his dad might have played football too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's Hyam, the guy we just talked about. Oh, I don't know. I think that's going to be a block from uh, behind. Uh, but he, did, high with the run. he didn't even touch him. Though. No, but that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the Looks like he's caught by Neshoba Moore, but we do have a flag on the play. Nice play there by Moore. I think they're going to call that on Marquise. It's an interesting decision here for the uh, Wolverines. Do you take the fourth and two against uh, yeah, that's the high-powered offense, or do you make it uh, you know, third, and th third and 13? Yeah. Uh, I think I'd be going for the third, third and 13. Third and 13, me too, yeah. Yeah, especially from the field position here. Penalty be against yeah. Cora. 
coaching uh, the officials will be talking with five minutes to play in the first quarter. Our officials do a, do a really good job of going over the choices and explaining things with the uh, with the young players and you know kind of making sure you know hey you, you sure you want to do that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so they they take you they they call holding like and they take the behind. penalty and uh, it's gonna be third we'll and thirteen yeah that's a good call is that a f yeah that is a ten yarder eh? yeah. yeah so third down and thirteen for the Wolverines they move back ten yards third and twelve it'll be 13, from the Cora Colts 33 yard line. What are you calling here, Bono? Well, I mean, how do you not throw? I mean, how do you not either give it to Gazzetti or throw it to Marquise, right? I mean, <laughs> I think Coach Booch, though, I think he wants to get other people involved today, right? Yeah, I think he wants he does, to spread yeah. the ball around a little bit. So, you know, I, selfishly, I want to see him throw to Marquise again just because I want to see what kind of play he can make. Yeah, and there it is. Looks like you got your way. Yeah, so, yeah. And there it is on a little hook route. So he doesn't yep. quite get the first Fairfield. down, so it looks like it'll be fourth and one. Almost the exact same complete. thing it was, right? Fourth and two, fourth and one, down. yeah. Really nicely done there, though. Good good job by the quarterback Slosser. Number eight, Nishoka Moore Drop back patiently, right. took a look, picked his target, and, uh, down and threw a strike yep. to Marquise. So. Yeah, nice play there. Pass was good for 10 yards. So just the exact same situation White Pines would have had. Yeah. So second, yeah. fourth down and two, so it's no worse for wear on the penalty. Core is going for it. Maybe a little Gazzetti here. Yeah, you have to think. Or Haim. Yeah, there's Gazzetti to the right side. And nice job Hand again Gazzetti. by the Wolverines. The Stop by down. number 11, 11, Benjamin Potter. Benjamin Potter. Yeah, Benjamin Potter, nice play there. Nice, nice little game there for Gazzetti, that's for sure. I think so far the game plan by uh, by uh, Coach uh, Baz on the defense over there is, has been pretty good. They, they seem to be, uh, you know... Making it difficult for uh, outside of the first play of the game outside, yeah. uh, for the core Colts to get their yards on the ground. So I feel like that's what you need to do right against this team is just try to not to give up the big play, right, and yep. try to make them, you know, the bend don't, don't break type defense. And I think if you can do that, you, you know, give them a chance, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's that little counter that Cora just loves to run to Hyam and Nathan Hyam. With a the nice move on the outside, the but what a tackle by He's Neshoba Moore. By that's Moore not easy. A, about 14 yards. That play, down. Jim, that Cora runs, that little counter there, that little slot counter. They've been running it now for a few years. And it's a little crisscross. Yeah. yeah. The inside handoff. Uh, yeah, to the slot. The, the, yeah. slot, the running back hands it off yeah. to the slot. And that's such a tough play to stop because, you know, of all the other options that they have, it's it's just you have to be disciplined on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, looks like a really good athlete. I mean, it's an athletic family. They're, they're, they're mostly a basketball family. And, uh, you know, I know the brothers and even the First sister played Cora. basketball. Uh, he, Nathan's actually uh, a little, little taller than the, the, than the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> way much taller. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nathan Hyam, in my opinion, uh, you know, was – well, he was – not in my opinion. He was definitely in discussion for player of the game last week for the Colts. He had a heck of a football game. Yeah, he's a, he's a really athletic kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, athletic family and a, and a nice family. A couple of yeah. flags. Yeah, absolutely. And there's two flags on the play, so it'll be a five-yard penalty for encroachment, I believe, on the Wolverines. It'll be first down and five the for the Colts from the Wolverines' 39-yard line. Five after a five-yard penalty. Nixon Blair, I believe, a quarterback now. For the or no, sorry, that is uh, it's Varpio. Sorry, a quarterback. Pass intended for number seven, Nathan Hyam is incomplete. Yeah, Alex Varpio. He's, yeah. He tries to find Hyam there. Little, 18, Nicholas Lovett. Uh, that, that, that was who that was who the backup was that I was trying to remember. Varpio, yeah. He played uh, he played a nice game. He got a few snaps against St. Mary's and he looked pretty solid back there too. So again, nice uh, it's a nice problem to have. You he's, know, a couple great ten quarterbacks. He's a new player to me, Bono. I don't know if uh, Yeah, I no, I the first time I saw him yeah. was last week too, but so, yeah. so he's got good quarterback size. And he's uh, huge. His feet look good there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He's a tall, tall kid, that's for sure. So it'll be second down and five for the Colts. Melchiori goes in motion. Vaprio's out. And there's a pick, an interception by the Wolverines. By number number four, 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 Jacob Day with a big interception for the Wolverines. With 154 to play, White Pines will there take over. First field. down and 10 from their own 35-yard line. However, there is a flag on the play. It's a hold against the offense, so it'll, it be declined, declined. It and it'll be declined, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Wolverines. 
Jacob Day, he's a great niner. He played in the in the Sioux minor league this year. Uh, Bono, yep. I don't know if you remember him. But, oh yeah. Uh, he, he made some plays, and he's it seems like a, a hard nosed kid. Uh, you know, the ball just kind of ended up in his hands, and he made he made the play. So good job by him. Yeah, and you know what, um, Varpio there, beautiful rollout. You know, nice uh, nice everything. Even the throw itself wasn't too bad. Just uh, yeah, I'm think, not sure if there was a saw him, yeah. I don't I don't know if there was just a miscommunication with the receiver there, but you know. Uh, Nice move by him, and you're right, Jim. He does have all all the all the skill set. Right, he looks the part. So, and there's McCorkle, McCorkle with a little spin McCorkle over the right side. To his right, and McCorkle picks up a short gain of about two or three yards. There, it looks like. So it'll be second down and eight. Interesting, Bono. Uh, early on here, we've seen the Colts try to throw the ball around a little yeah. bit. Then, uh, Hunter Dickinson in on the top um, of Procora. That'll set up second and eight. I'm just probably trying to send a message to the rest of the league that you know we we we're not just one dimensional. So uh, for sure. Yeah. And and the other thing is, uh, I think they obviously watched some game tape last week because this White Pines defense did a heck of a job stopping the run against Superior Heights last week. So yeah, you know maybe yeah. that's one of their strengths, and that's kind of what they see, right? And they got and they got extra bodies in the box for sure to stop the run, right? So yeah. you uh, you take you, the the matchups they give you, and if they if they're daring you to throw, sometimes you throw, but. Probably, uh, I think they're going to go back to running the ball. Bono, yeah. So the quarterback yeah. keeper kept by Nishoba Nishoba Moore, Moore with a hard run Number up the 48. middle. Uh, ran right Looks at like Serrero. But nice run there by Moore, and that was a there was some contact there. Oh, you don't want to see that. Player. We have an injury timeout. Hopefully, that's nothing serious because he uh, you could hear that contact. He hit that hole hard, and yeah, that was uh, a nice run there by Moore. He picked up about three yards, so it'll be third down and five with 42.2 seconds to play in the first quarter. Jim, that was one thing that we kind of talked about a little bit last week with uh, when I was on the broadcast with, I believe, Kevin Hemsworth. If you remember last year, you know, these kids went two years without football, and I think the ambulance showed up to the field you know, I think it was like six times in the first three games or yeah. something ridiculous, right? Yeah. And watching your senior game and watching the senior games last week, it was good, hard-hitting football. And, you know, and the most important thing was it was a relatively clean game, right? Nobody, there were no serious, serious injuries that took place that we could see anyway. So just talk about how, what it's been like now to have a year under your belt and, you know, these kids are getting back into contact. And, you know, did those two years of COVID, what kind of impact did you actually see that have in the senior division? Yeah, I think there was a little bit of fall off. I think last year the, the senior league was, wasn't very good. Uh, you know, they hadn't, uh, guys hadn't played junior, basically the whole league mm -hmm. had, didn't really play junior, right? So uh, it was tough, uh, you know, and then even in the junior league, the guys didn't have, to have the opportunity to play Sioux minor football. That's right. uh, for a while, if, if at all. So, uh, you know, uh, in that regard, yeah, I agree with you, Bono. And uh, I really actually really thought the first half of the, well, the whole game, but I, was, I watched more of the first half of the uh, Cora St. Mary's junior game last week. Yeah. That was a hard-hitting game. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, for guys that are playing, you know, their second <coughs> their second game of the season or whatever it was, uh, they, they, there was a hard-hitting game, and uh, that's one I noticed for sure. Yeah, you know, <coughs> it's nice to hear those the crack of the pads again, right? And that's kind of what you really heard there. And it looks like it might be a uh, – you're hoping it's a lower – or not hoping, I guess, but it looks like it might be a lower body, body injury there on Moore. That's yeah, a big Nisho, loss. Yeah, and the show was a tough kid. I think – I mean, yeah. I, I'm not, hopefully he's not too serious. So he'll, he'll be fine, uh, maybe not right away, but yeah. uh, I know the show was a tough, tough kid. So Yeah, that was, a, that was a hard run, no question. I was wondering, Bono, maybe uh, if if uh, Pine's not uh, not 100%, he's not doesn't seem to be running the ball. I'm I'm not trying to yeah. say anything. I'm just speculating. Uh, what do you think, Bono? Yeah, I think you know what he took an absolute beating absolutely. last week too. Yeah. So absolutely. I th I also think maybe Coach Baz and maybe the hope that Coach Baz might be like, hey, listen, we need this kid for this to get through the season. So yes. maybe they're trying to protect him a little bit too, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This oh, this is this is him right here, number 24. Yes. We don't have him on the roster. That's why. But no, this, that was the young man. He's new to football. Number twenty-four, Adam Hassan. Hassan, yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. So Hassan is new to football. So he has an interesting he's story. He's new to Canada, and uh, I believe Baz said he was new to Canada or he's new to football. And he came out, and his first carry last week, like we talked about, he fumbled the very first yeah. time. So 
you know, they didn't give him the ball for another two quarters in the fourth quarter. I think he had a huge run. He had about I think, a forty I think yard the run. Second time he carried the ball, he, he, he had, had a touchdown. Long touchdown run he and, did, and, and, and I think he broke uh, Usain Bolt's uh, the hundred meter <laughs> yeah, record. He was yeah, running so fast, yeah. I couldn't believe it. So, I know. Yeah. So uh, another uh, nice, you know, the, there's a fake to him and Garen Pine with a run to the outside, but what a tackle there by Gazzetti, Garen number Pine twenty-two. Keeps the ball, tries to get the outside. He's met by number twenty-two. Nathan yeah, yeah, it's the one. The one thing, um, you know, you got this Cora team. They're they're playing a lot of their kids on offense and on defense, right? And playing a lot of kids both ways. And that's a again when you when you have the type of players that they do, that's a huge huge advantage to keep those kids fresh and, and kind of keep them on the field and their head in the game. Yeah, Bob, well, that's one of the. And as a coach, you fight, you walk that line. Uh, do you do you play those guys both ways early in the, the season, the or do you quarter. wait? Do you wait till the end of the year and yeah. you know, slide them in when you really need them? And uh, I kind of believe in. I kind of agree Pine with them. Likes to keep it. Play them, play them early, use them up, get them ready. So uh, come playoff time, it's not a shock Ethan to them. They're used, they're used to playing that much. I mean, yeah, for sure. And I mean, guys like Hyam and Gazzetti yeah. aren't going to get <laughs> tired anyway, so uh, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. You know, one yeah. one thing, Aiden Wanch, number 87 out there, he didn't get a whole lot of playing time on last week, you know, which was, you know, kind of surprising. But, again, it's not surprising because of the depth of this Cora Colts team. But to see him get the start out here today, that's a good sign. Aiden Wanch was one of the Norm Casola winners for our Sioux Minor Football League this year. Outstanding young man and uh, an outstanding football player. Signs. My goodness, he... You know, we've both been coaching a long time, and, and we talked about the impact that he had in a football game this past summer. Yeah, he's a he's a long, lean DN, right? Kind of like a prototypical yep. DN body, and uh, he'll have to put some some muscle on. But I'm, For I'm sure, sure that I'm sure they're on that already. Uh, yeah, he, he's got a lot of potential. He's got a big, big motor. Yeah, That's speaking one thing with him. Speaking of putting some muscle on, this is kind of changing the subject. I saw Jude Rasaya last night. If you remember, oh, yeah, uh, I remember Jude. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a monster he's put yeah, on! Eh? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's he uh, he played for me back in the day, and yeah. I, thought, I thought you were going to say me. Hey, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah you too. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jim, I'm really sorry, but I have to duck out, so I'm going to leave you leave you with this, Curtis and uh, tackle, good luck tomorrow. Look forward to the game, and 14. we'll definitely be doing this again, I'm sure, this summer or this fall. So, well, thanks, Bob. Yep. I think we have to you have to apologize more to the listeners that are stuck with me <laughs> than you do uh, uh, myself, but I'll muddle my way through here, guys. I'll do my best. Sounds so. good. Thanks, guys. So it's going to be fourth down and 13 for the Wolverines uh, here in, with 11.28 left in the second quarter. Looks like they're going to punt as the punter scrambles onto the field, Ethan McCorkle. <laughs> so the punt is blocked. Punt is blocked and Punt is blocked, and the uh, Colts will take 32. over uh, first and ten on the uh, Boyer for White Pines. on the Wolverine 38. 37, Curtis Price with the block of the punt. It's Curtis Price, number 37, with the, uh, with the block. Good job by him. This will be first down and ten for the core Colts on the Wolverine 38-yard line. Jim O'Joyne, yeah, but if it's not ice, I'm not sure what I can talk about. So well, that's okay, Jay. We're, that's okay. We'll, we'll muddle our way through. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. First down and ten for the Colts. Regular set. Looks like Sloss is back in at quarterback. Plays whistle. Down whistle, whistle before the snap of the ball. See what's happening here. Oh, flag. Late flag comes in. Looks like it's going to be against the Colts. Can't quite see the signal, so it's going to be first down and 15. First and 15 for the Colts now from the Wolverine 43. 10.08 left in the second quarter with the clock running. Colts receiving their signals from their coaches. It's 
Voss gives it to Malcuri, he explodes through the hole and gets the boat. Good hard Six run. yards, makes the second down and nine. Good defensive play by Malcuri the, with by the, the uh, Wolverines. Tackle by Potter. Looks like Potter in on the tackle there. Benjamin Potter, he's made a couple plays tonight. Tackle Good job by him. 51, Stephen Day Nolan. 51, Stephen Day Nolan also in on the play. Second and nine. Second down and nine now from the 37 yard line. And around, it'll be uh, number 34, A.J. Cochamilio. He's got some room around the outside. And, and he off gets to down to the 25. First down. He steps out of bounds inside the 30. He's forced out of bounds by 23, Ethan McCorkle, and 29, Chris Cormier. 23, McCorkle blocking away, forcing him out of bounds. Steve, so we, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Jay. Stephen Day Nolan was uh, the team essential uh, player of the game last week. Yeah, I, I, I like the way he played too, uh, Jay. When I saw when I got home, when I saw that you guys had selected him, I, I agreed with that. Uh, he seems like a, uh, a tough, hard-nosed player, and that's nice to see that kind of player get uh, get recognized. So I thought you guys made a great choice there. I agree with you. And when, when, when we gave him the award, he actually was quite emotional. So yeah, yeah that's nice. That's it. nice. So be Malcuri again. He goes around the right side, makes a nice move, cuts back, heads towards the goal line, gets down inside the ten, and. He scores. Touchdown. Malcuri Beautiful run nice by Peyton Malcuri. Touchdown, Cora. 25 yards for the major, and the Cora Colts extend their lead to 19 to nothing. 25-yard touchdown run. Not bad for a backup running back, AJ. Not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's not really a backup running back, but on, on this team he is. But that was a really nice run. And that's one thing about Cora, getting some second stringers in there at this time of the game, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Meaningful time against the, against meaningful players, it's uh, it's important. Yeah, and they do, they, they've they always done a really, really, really good job of that. So looks like Mike and Cuglietta will kick the convert. Last one was blocked, so uh, we'll see what they do here. A little bit of a bad snap. Picked up and ran into the end zone by number eight, Bryson Sloss, the quarterback Sloss and holder. It. That's two-point conversion. So it's 21 to nothing now for the Colts. It's a little bit of a tough start here for the Wolverines. They've, they've hung tough. They've made it difficult for the, uh, for the Colts, but it's just uh, it, it's tough. Uh, you know, like we said, they're up against a real challenging team, and Cora seems to be on their game today. So uh, we'll see. Like we said, just move on to the next play. Keep it going. I'm sure these guys will do a good job of, uh, of keeping it going. You know, Jay, in your time as, as, a, as a hockey coach, uh, you, you've been face these situations right being up a lot or being down a lot it's, it's tough as a coach right exactly and that's 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 one thing like they were talking last night during the basketball game is with Sault Ste. Marie with only four teams in the league um the semis and the finals are the two big games but everything before that is practice and learning for for that for the season right absolutely and, it, and then I think White Pines Wolverines will will take this as a learning experience I mean I'm not I'm not putting them in the grave yet but they're down 21 nothing with 8-10 left in the uh, the second quarter uh, you know, you got to learn from every play, and it's a tough task, and they knew that coming in. And that's one thing that Coach Bougeau was saying the last couple of years, even including COVID. It's something that's one thing about White Pines, not saying anything else but the other teams. These kids get down, but they don't give up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I think I, I think when I think of the uh, White Pines Wolverines, I think of character. I think they're, they're you know, they got character coaches. they got character players, and uh, – Absolutely. That that's what I think of toughness, character, and uh, just keep Kobe keep Edward going, keep going, right? So there's the kickoff. It's fielded by number 18. Fielded by Loudon. He Nicholas refuses Loudon. to go down. Nice gets return. to the 50 yard line. Number one, Gage Peters. No, oh, uh, Loudon, uh, very very dangerous return man. He's done a good job uh, in the return game. He's that's two nice returns now. So we'll see if the Colts continue to kick to him. It'll be first down and 10 for the Wolverines on their own 50-yard line. Let's see if they can get something going, maybe pick up a first down or two and uh, get, get something uh, mustered up here on offense. And, and that's something you, you and Tony were talking about in the first quarter is is they have numerous grade 10s. So next year, moving up to grade 11, is uh, they're going to have a, one heck of a senior team. Yeah, I think, it'll, I think it'll be a little bit of a process. I think it'll take them a year or two, but I, I definitely think they're, they're headed in the right direction, absolutely. Now, you as the same years, Coach, does that make you nervous? No, not nervous. It makes me happy. I, I welcome an, another tough game, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, we need that in our city. That's number nine. Daniel uh, Pine with the carry. Daniel He's Pine with the carry. Ethan Sorreo. Ethan who's a big, Just strong uh, force out there, makes another play on defense, up. and it's going to be second down and 12. 
Well, Jay, I, I like welcome it. I'd love to. Ball. I'd love to see the four-team league back, and I'd love to see White Pines be really good. And uh, uh, I, I think it'll happen. I think it might take a little bit of time, but I think it'll happen. I think they got the right people there. I said that several times already, and I really believe that. So I just hope that they have numbers to do a junior team too, right? Yeah, and I think they will. I think they do a good job of getting their guys out. So, and that's you guys at Sioux Minor, right? Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. Pine yeah. gets back to the original line of scrimmage. He's tackled by number. So that's Daniel Pine Five. on the carry once again. Okay, good uh, he gets uh, he gets I'll set up third both three. And He'll make it third and ten for White Pine. Nice play by the the big man there, Ken Goodship, as he came across and uh, brought down Pine for a at the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and nine. Let's see what the Colts have, the Wolverines have up their sleeve on third and nine. Quarterback Garen Pine waits the snap. He rolls to his left. Nice run. He's got a little bit of room, but not quite enough. Gets about four yards. Looks like number 87, Aiden Wanch, brought him down from behind. White Pine selects to keep going with it. Garen Pine with the carry. So it'll be fourth down and five. And Pine last, last week, I, I'm not exactly sure the number of yards ran, but it was just for the yeah, yeah, junior. It was, it, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. He was impressive. He's, he seems like a really good, big, strong athlete. So, uh, yeah, nice to see. Looks like the White Pines Wolverines are going to punt on fourth down and six. Six ten clock running in the second half, second quarter, sorry. Sorry, now it's fourth down. There's the punt. Oh, punt is muffed. 23, Ethan Mokorko with the kick. So the ball bounces off the Colts return man's shoulder pads. There's a little scramble for it in the loose ball. We'll see what happens here. And it will White be recovered Pines. by White the White Pines, Pines Wolverines. Sure, it looks like they recovered the ball. Jay, I know you like to see White Pines back uh, doing well. You got a little, a little bit of a t some ties with the White Pines Wolverines, yeah, right? I had both. Both I was my boys. Eighteen, Nicholas. Both of my boys went Louder there and uh, with the recovery. I actually had a brother who, who won a uh, White Pines, who won the city and also championship with uh, Mike Cowan on the hockey team, also. Yeah, yeah. On so. the core of thirty-eight. So a big break in the game as the White Pines Wolverines have their first chance to maybe put some points on the board. They'll take over first down and 10 from the cold 38-yard line. See what they do here. See if they stick with their stuff if they, or if they pull something under their sleeve. There's the handoff to Pine. He makes a nice cut and gets handoff some yards. Handoff to number nine, Daniel Pine. He gets a little bit of good yardage. Looks like he's brought down by number 23, 23 Hunter Dickinson. Dickinson. In on the tackle. This will be second down and seven. And while we have a minute, how's uh, your son at Bishop's doing, Jim? Oh, he's doing fine. Uh, the, actually, they're uh, they're waiting to see what's going to happen this weekend. They're they're headed to Halifax, where the uh, the hurricane's supposed to be hitting. So there was some talk of the game being moved and stuff like that, that the game time and the game day. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, they're off to a little bit of a rough start. Uh, they haven't been winning much, but uh, they got a big game this weekend. So. There's a quarterback keeper there, Pine on the play. He loses a Cohen few Manchalenko yards. Going on the Number 36, Cohen Manchalenko with the tackle. And so it's going to be third down and 12 now for the uh, Wolverines the from the Cora 40-yard line. And your son Dylan, would you ever, would he have ever expected to worry about hurricane season in football? No, I don't think he ever in would Canada. have expected that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's doing well. He's happy and he's plugging away at school and... And that's the biggest thing I've always said to my kids and anybody is if they can get sports school together, that's that's the biggest thing, right? Absolutely, and it's a big commitment. It's a lot of work, but uh, they, those those student athletes do a really good job. Here's Pine again. He's met immediately. Big defensive play by number 37, Curtis off, Price. Immediately Price explodes into the backfield and uh, brings Price. down the Pine Lost for a loss. So it's now fourth and 14. And they're going to look to punt and the, the, for the drop punt again, Jay, and uh, move all the way down the move field like the that. Yeah. To about the 10 yard line. Yeah. Not a common strategy, but. If it works. Yeah, if it works, yeah. I don't think the Colts will be dropping this punt. No. And Coach uh, Bernabucci uh, probably won't allow it. No, probably not. Oh, no, this is not really not. As his punt is blocked and it's picked up by number seven, Nathan Hyam, and he's going to score. Nathan Hyam with the block. Recovery and touchdown. 
So that's what happens there. You know, uh, one big specialty team play by the Wolverines and they can't capitalize. And then a big special team play by the Colts and they bring it in for a touchdown. And the lead is now 27 to nothing for the Colts. And uh, that's a bit of a, back, a backbreaker for the uh, White Pines Wolverines for sure as they're just starting to kind of sneak their way back into the game. But uh, that's not going to happen now. So and deflates the confidence a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the convert is, uh, will be attempted now. Number three, um, Mikin Cuglietta will kick the convert. Try to make it 28 to nothing. Cuglietta to kick for Cora. Snap is a little bit high and blocked. Watch snap. Extra point is blocked by, looks like, number 29, Chris Cormier. So the, the snap was a little bit high. The uh, quarterback, who's the holder, Bryson Sloss, tried to get back down and, and, no uh, and pin it. He probably should have ran it like he did last time, but uh, he attempted to do, put it back down, and the, punt, the kick is blocked. So it's now 27 to nothing for the Cora Colts with 2.40 left in the first half. As a senior co coach, Jim, it's something, again, you only have so much time in practice. How much do they actually get, actually get to practice? kicks like that we we actually we actually spend a lot of time on special teams and I, th and I think most te most of these teams do it's a little bit harder in junior because you got to coach more basics so uh you, you are more pressed for time uh we we do spend a lot of time in Canadian fo especially in the senior game it's three downs right so uh you know there's a lot more punting a lot of more punt punt return so we do we do spend a lot of time uh I think the core junior team probably does too, but core junior team also has a lot of guys. Yep. So they probably are a little bit pressed for time too because they got to get guys reps and drills. So, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's a, it's a lot tougher in junior though. Is it tough for junior? You're playing four downs here. You play three downs in senior, depending on what where you're playing in, in summer ball yep. down wise. Yeah. Is it hard to adapt? I think it's probably hard to adapt. I don't know how much how much hard how much how that is for a player. But as as a coach, I mean, it's a totally different game. I haven't coached four downs in a while now, so but. Uh, Kuglietta with a nice I think, kick. I think for a coach, it's it's. Fielded by tougher. Nicholas Loudon with another great run. Another nice return by Loudon. I mean, that that's been their best their best part of their game so far as their return game. So they they, they have to be happy with that. But yeah, it's a totally Price different it's a totally different game. Jay, uh, Jay uh, three down with football, four down football. Cora. You know, not just specialty teams, but if you can't it's get rolling, if you can't get rolling on offense. And two downs, and then you got to punt. It's, it's a long day, and sometimes you got to take a couple chances and, you know, go for it a little bit on third down. Uh, I, I'm, I'm known for that a little bit, not always liking to punt. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's totally different. And four downs is more for learning, right? I think four downs is good for learning in the junior game, absolutely. Uh, but I, I actually, maybe because I'm old and it's a, it's a different uh, – it's a different game. Maybe I enjoy the change. I really enjoy the three-down football. It's, it's just different. Makes it more challenging, Makes too. Makes it right? more challenging, yep. Yeah. So there's Pine again on the carry. Uh, Daniel Pine. He gets back to the line Pine of scrimmage, gets maybe it. a yard. Uh, looks like 88 on the tackle there. Diego, uh, Diego Cabana, Campagna. First guy on the tackle. And second we'll down and 10. No gain on the play. Clock ticking uh, down towards the uh, end of the half here. It's the three minute timing, so the, the clock will stop after every play until it's blown in. Referee wants the clock to be running now, and it's not, but, <laughs> yeah. So, now it is. Now the coaches can blame, I mean, refs can blame one another because they run the clock now, right? Yeah, I'm assuming someone on the field has run the clock, yeah. Garen tough Pine keeps tough it. run there by number 19, Garrett Pine. He gets out uh, maybe five, six yards. Be third and four. Now, Jim, I always ask you not off, on, not on the mic, but how many years do you have left? I don't know. I, I, I always, I always say not many, and I always keep coming left. back. I was actually talking about that today. I want to do uh, kind of day by day. Uh, I, I don't going every day to practice in high school <laughs> after after when you practice in the summer and you only practice twice a week. Going every day is, is, a, is more of a grind, but I mean, I still enjoy it. I still like the kids. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh. Nice run there. Good hard run for a couple they of yards. They run a little shovel pass there, get the ball into a Loudit's hands, who's had, a, who's had a good game tonight. And uh, he gains a couple yards, makes it four down and two. Dickinson in on the tackle. Dickinson with the tackle once again, Hunter. Uh, so it'll be fourth down and two as the the, will, the Pines, White Pines Wolverines will try to pick up their first first down of the game. So 
on offense. We think fourth down with. Uh, Let's see what they have dialed up here. Do you think Pine's going to go straight through? That's what I, w I was thinking. Uh, he's a tough runner. No, it's going to be Garen Pine on the keeper, and he breaks the tackle, and he's got the first down. Good job by Garen. Just like, by a couple inches, but. Yeah. Looks like 87, eight and Wanch with the tackle. Wanch in on the tackle, it'll be first down. So it's first down and 10 for the White Pines Wolverines on the Colt 46 yard line. And football is just one yard at a time, right, Jim? One yard at a time, yeah. I think just I need th to get 10 to move on. I think I think you're going to see, uh, I mean, the White Pines are going to have to take some kind of shot here as the half goes on. They're going to have to make a big play to try and score. I think they're going to try to do something. They run that little flip to loud it. Nice play, nice open field nice running. Nice little pitch to loud it. Five you yards. Get some good yardage. Yeah. Looks like Aiden Wanch again in on yeah, the tackle Wanch for on Cora. The tackle once again. I just think, Jay, that they're going to they're want to try and score. And they're Second not, and about five. They're not going to be able to score five yards at a time. They don't have time and a half, so they might see them try to do something. Clock run, t ticking down towards a minute left in the half. And does, does Pine have an arm to go to the air? I think he can throw, yeah. I think he can. He hasn't been throwing much, though. So it'll be Daniel Pine on the carry, and he's met immediately. Nice tackle by Gazzetti. Daniel Pine. Tough run by Pine. Looks like he gets a couple of hard yards. Be third and three, I believe, for the Wolverines. 53 and a half seconds left. Gazzetti in on the tackle. On the Cora 40-yard line. In junior, what's an average uh, field goal oh. if you go for it? Uh, <laughs> Not long, I don't think. Maybe 20, 25 20. yards. I think they'd have to get into the I don't know the kicker very well, but they'd have to probably get inside the 20 to even think about trying a field goal. I would guess. So there's a Pine on the carry. Garen Pine. The ball is taken out of his hands, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, the, the Cora. Cora has the he ball. He stripped it. Number 19, Garen looks Pine. Like, looks like 23, uh, Hunter right Dickinson stole the ball right out of his hands. It's going to be Cora Ball. Heads up play there by the uh, by the Wolves. Looks like number 23, Hunter Dickinson with the steal. Hunter Dickinson, real good first player. First and 10, Cora. So now the Colts take over first down and 10 from their own 34 with 32.8 seconds left in the half. Let's see what the Colts do here. Do they try to uh, put up another touchdown before the end of the half, or do they uh, just uh, go to the half with their 27 to nothing lead? I think they're going to try and score. Hand the ball to Cassetti or throw the ball to Strawbridge or hand the ball to uh, to Hyam. Lots of options. And Strawbridge has got that height for a junior player. Oh, he's, player. A, he's a big man. He's, he's, a, he's a matchup nightmare. And there's a little swing oh. pass. There's a lot of room out here. That's Peyton Melchiori. Verifield with a nice pass to Peyton Melchiori. Very well done. 27 yards. So they run Strawbridge deep, and uh, Melchiori swings up underneath him uh, where, where the corner that was covering uh, vacated the area, and he's got a lot of room. He makes a nice play. Chris Kirby stops him at the uh, – runs him out of bounds. Melchiori's a very dangerous player in open space, and he shows it there. Colts definitely want to score again before half. And your senior game last week, wasn't there two field goals or two field goals attempts? Uh, yeah, Cora kicked two field goals, yeah, I believe. You usually don't see that a, uh, even a lot in senior. Oh, there's a yeah. fumble. Ball is out. Good hard run, though. Fumble on the play and is recovered by the Wolverines. So with 12.2. Number 18, loud There goes, there goes the that recovery. thought of the White score Pines. before the end of the half. <laughs> loud it with the fumble recovery. Uh, he, he's, the, he's been the best Wolverine today, I'd have to say. So fitting. football you you do hear the same names over and over but oh, it take yeah. it but it takes that line to to get them to hear the name over and over absolutely right? absolutely i mean it's the most thankless job on the field is the old lineman you don't hear the name i'll try to point some of them out in the second half if i can and uh yeah we don't we don't you don't hear much about them so garen pine back to pass he's got a man open oh. and he just <laughs> can't haul it in that's chris cormier garen number pine, 29 pass intended 
for Chris Cormier, yeah. in and out of his hands. And we were talking about his arm. That was almost down. a 20-yard pass. Yeah, yeah. He, he just slipped it out there. He put it out to a spot where the guy could try to make a play, but just a little bit, a little bit over, out of out of, uh, out of his reach. So I don't think the clock ran that play, which is a, the advantage nope. for the Wolves. Oh, here we go. Now, now it's, running. it's running. He's going to stop it. Probably guess how much. Yeah, 7.5 seconds left, and. Uh, the clock will hold because of the incomplete pass, and it'll start running on the uh, on the snap of the ball. Pine back in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's going to throw again. He hopes to. Steps up in the pocket and almost intercepted. Pine's pass intended. Hunter for Dickinson stepped in front of the receiver. Pass uh, intended for 29 Cormier. And it's incomplete. It'll be, uh, this should be the last play of the half, barring Defended penalty. 23 Dickinson. Sets up third down. If Dickinson would have would have caught that, he would have been off to the races with his speed. So uh, a little bit of a break there for the Wolverines. Uh, so this should be the last play of the half. Twenty-seven to nothing for the Colts. I think the Wolverines have have held uh, held in the game pretty well. Uh, probably the coaches wouldn't agree with me, but uh, from a, my standpoint, they've done a good job. They've stopped the big plays, you know, outside of the block punt, which they can't do much about. So. Inside handoff there to uh, Loudon, try to get their athlete going, and he's brought down. And, he gets about five, and it's four, going to be halftime, and we'll be back in That'll about 10 minutes. Folks, thank half. you. 27 nothing for the Colts.
You know it's getting dark earlier when you turn the lights on at uh, 7 o'clock now. Yeah, I know. Are we live now, Jay? Yep. All right, folks, we're about to start the second half here. The White Pines Wolverines will receive the kick. They trail 27 to nothing. A little bit of wind out there blowing the ball over. The kicker will reset the ball. Cuglietta. And not a cloud in the sky, so we might see a little bit of sun for a while. Yeah. And you're right, Jay. The light's on already. Uh, I don't think they're 100% necessary, but there's no harm in putting them on. Ball is kicked away. Number 24, Hassan, has a little bit of trouble fielding it. It bounces to Loudit, and he's brought down immediately. Nice, nice uh, special teams play by number 88, Diego Campagna. Oh, with a nice kick. And the Wolverines will scrimmage from their own 25-yard line. So a little bit of a return. A lot of new names to football for you, eh, Jim? Like compared to Sorry, where you've had the return. brothers and the... Yeah, it's a lot of new names, uh, you know... I, I did go to all the Sioux Minor football games this year, so I know most of the, the grade nines, uh, the grade tens. Uh, I don't I don't know all of them unless I coach them in the summer. So yeah, there's a lot a lot of new names and uh, a lot of really good athletes. And sorry, eighty nine Jackson Hill. The caliber of play is very good. So and my friend Phil Bambaco was telling me that it was eighty nine Jackson they Hills on the on tackle. The Here's Pine. He breaks a run Excellent here. Excellent run by number nine. There is a flag down. Daniel Pine, good for about 14 yards. Daniel Pine on the carry, gets 14 yards He's and a first down. Tackle, but we do have a flag on the play. I'm going to guess the penalty is against Cora. Yeah. Dude. Illegal substitution, I believe, was the call, and it's declined. And, Jay, a little hint for you when... If the play had been on White Pines, the penalty had been on White Pines, the referee would have stayed back because the ball would have been coming okay. back. So when you move and see him move up with the ball, you kind of know that it's against the defense. So, And I'll be honest, like say, with streaming the sports, I'm behind the scenes, so I don't really get to see most of the no, sports. No, I know that too, yep, yeah. Here's a handoff to Pine once again. He makes a really nice cut, and then Pine. he makes another it's nice cut, and he's got a little bit of room. Really nice run. Another 15 yards. He's brought down an open field by First number down. seven, uh, Nathan Hyam and a really, really nice run by Daniel Pine. Looks like the Wolverines made a little bit of a couple seven, of little adjustments in their run game, and they found some room, and uh, Pine was able to take advantage of it. However, he is and down on one knee right now. Yeah, I think when he got tackled, there was a player that fell fell on top. Yeah, I don't think it's anything too serious, but he's definitely shaken up. We've got 10.57 left in the third quarter. The White Pines Wolverines trailing the Cora Colts 27 to nothing. During this break, the Cora football team I'd like to wish fellow student Gracie Adams a happy, a very happy 12th birthday today. There's the happy uh, birthday, Gracie. Hope you enjoy your brand new iPhone and your new puppy. There's uh, Coach uh, uh, Baz. Looks like he's wearing uh, some sort of uh, cardigan or something yeah, today. Almost AJ. a retro. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't know where uh, where he pulled that out of. He likes to uh, wear dress a little uh, special. I, I call it uh, so. Almost I, like a, almost like Don Cherry when he was yeah. on Coach's Corners, different yeah. jackets. Yeah, really, really good young coach. Uh, I really enjoy my time with him. Uh, he's, a, he's a good man. He's good with the kids and uh, very, very hardworking coach. And uh, he's going to be a successful coach in the city. And uh, the Wolverines, to me, are lucky to have him. And he teaches at White Pines, and uh, I think it's a fantastic fit for them. And that's what I was I was talking to him before the season because he's wearing the brown and gold for so many years. Oh, yeah, and he's still got it in his blood, but and not, not said, today. And I said the tra transition, I said, how hard was it? He goes, not at all. He yeah. goes, it was, it was different colors, and the kids he's working with are amazing. So Yeah, yeah, and he's uh, he's good. Like I said, uh, the, I really enjoy my time with him, and I think they're, uh, you know, he's my, my he's the defensive coordinator on the uh, the Junior Sabercats, and uh, he's kind of in charge of the recruiting aspect and uh, a lot of the communication stuff and uh, does a fantastic job. And, you know, his, his dad, I see his dad here today wearing the uh, – Cora Colts uh, stuff. He's coached a long time coach with this Cora Junior team. Uh, this is his first year not coaching. So in over thirty years. Yeah, yeah. So may maybe uh, maybe uh, his son can get him out and uh, put some green on him uh, next year. So uh, I ask. Probably not, but. Oh, there's Pine. Number 19, Garen Pine with a great run. He gets a first down. So another nice run Good there. The quarterback Garen run. Pine on the quarterback keeper. He goes left and gets 12 yards Dickinson. and a first down. And 87. <laughs> Aiden Watch in on the tackle. Good for another first down. So here comes the first Wolverines. They've uh, they've had a couple good plays in a row here. 
And they've uh, marched into the Colt territory. They've done a lot of stuff to the uh, to their own left. Let's see if they keep that they keep that up. And I was talking to uh, to Coach Baz's dad before the game, and I asked him, "Are you missing it?" He goes, "Nope." He goes, "I get to come stand on the sidelines and and uh, watch the game now." Yeah, I mean, and, and Ray's a great guy, so uh, everyone's always happy to see him. Here comes Loudon on the carry. Uh, Breaks a couple tackles, gets maybe four yards, makes a second down Nicholas and six. Lauda. Nicholas Lauda continues to his, his solid play. Bryson's lost. And in on again, the being the same. I watch football, follow football, but with, with Junior, quarterback's always running back to, Run was good for both to the coach yards. to talk about plays. As much in senior two, or senior could give him a little bit of leeway? Uh, well, I don't. I, I'm. Uh, I mean, we we signal plays in, so I'm not sure. And, and so does so does Cora. Cora has a, an armband system. Uh, the, the, they yell. They'll yell out uh, some kind of verbiage, and the players know what, when they look on their armband what the next play is going to be. Uh, yeah. So it's a little. I know our junior Good. our junior Good. team too. The, the, the quarterback the runs out. So I don't know. It's it's all different. It depends on the team. Another tough, another tough tackle. run by number 24, Adam Hassan. He gets Gunner close to first down yardage. Hunter Dickinson brings him down. Two. It's going to be third and two. Impressive drive, impressive start to the half for the White Pines Wolverines. For all everyone that's listening, we uh, we thank you very much for uh, listening in today. We appreciate your uh, your your patronage and. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the game. Oh, Pine. And Pine's got some room around the uh, right Pine side, and uh, he's going to go in for the, the touchdown. Lead. Touchdown, White Pine. Number 19, Garen Pine around the right Garen side. With a 30, uh, 31 yard yards, and the Four White touchdown. Pines Wolverines are on the board. Really, really impressive drive. And, uh, I mean, the Cork Colts starters are still on the field, so it's not like we were looking at, uh, you know, some mercy points. That, that was all well-earned, well-designed, some nice adjustments. Good job by the Pine, White Pines Wolverines. And they make it 27-6 to six with the extra point pending. Yeah, the 31-yard yard run. Yeah, and there was, some, there was a lot of nice plays, a lot of steady drive uh, pl plays on that drive, and uh, they did a really good job. So number 23, Ethan McCorkle on the attempt to convert to make it 27-7. to seven. Looks like... McCorkle to Looks like 19, Garen Pine. Pine is the holder. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is good, and it's 27-7. to seven. And good. Well, that's got to be a little boost for the White Pines Wolverines as they try to make a little... Little case to get back into this game. 27 to 7, 828 left in the third quarter. And when it comes to football, they still got 20, 20 and a half minutes to play. So they got lots of time, yeah. Exactly. They got lots of time. And Canadian football, uh, sometimes the clock can move pretty slow. So uh, they, they got lots of time. Next drive is going to be big. Let's see how Cora responds. Let's see if the White Pines Wolverines try to do a little trickery on their kickoff, too. Maybe get a little short kick and. Now, being the junior coach for Sabercats, would you recommend a short kick here? At twenty-seven, I would. Seven? I would. Yeah. I, I. I don't. Depends how much time in practice they have to work on that, Jay. Uh, I. I would. I would look to kick short. I don't. I don't. I don't love the idea of kicking the ball deep to Gazzetti, anyways. So, uh, if they have it in, if they have worked on it, and I think they're going to. It looks. I think Cora thinks they're going to too. So uh, you'll see some kind of a, probably some kind of moonshot kick or something short. Try to change it around. Kicks a little bit of a mid le mid length kick to uh, number eighty six. Um, thirty six. Thirty six. Cohen, Cohen Menchlenko. Menchlenko with the run back. Menchlenko gets back to the forty five yard line. So they kind of pick a little bit a little bit of a safe kick where. Benjamin Potter. He had some help from a couple others. Where on they, the White Pines defense. If he misplays it, That'll they can still get the ball. First and ten. No, another question I have for line. if people, for anybody from other towns watching it, Superior Heights gets to practice on a turf field. Is it different for the other three teams practicing on a grass field? Well, I think the biggest thing for us, Jay, I can only speak for us in, in, in that question, is their field is really well lined, really well marked. The hash marks, the landmarks all over the field. We don't have that at St. Mary's. And for spacing when we run plays and stuff like that, 
that's the biggest advantage. It's not so much the, the field surface, but the how the the field is made up. That's the biggest thing. And we, we at St. Mary's, we really struggle with that. So. Manchalenko with the carry. So that again. was Cohen Manchalenko on the with the carry there. He gets looks like four yards. He's second down and Tackle six. Number fifty-five, Lawrence Solomon Ward for White Pines. Fifty-five, Lawrence Solomon Ward with the tackle. It's gonna be second down and six for the Colts on their own forty-nine yard line. Nice throw and catch there is number number 12, Alex Varpio at the quarterback. He finds Peyton Malcuri open. Malcuri hauls it in for about 10 yards and a first down. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Colts on the Wolverines' 52-yard line. Well done there by Varpio and a nice catch also by uh, Peyton Malcuri. Good job. It's going to be first down and 10. And Varpio just came back in, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, they they've been doing a good job. They got a lot. Of, they got uh, they don't have uh, Gazzetti in on offense anymore. They don't have Hyam in on offense anymore. So they got uh, some of their uh, their other players in. They got they got a lot of uh, depth on offense though, a lot and a lot. So shouldn't miss a beat. I mean, they miss a beat because it's not Gazzetti, but they'll still. So it's a time count violation time against count violation the against uh, Cora. Cora Colts. Now move ball, move the back five yards, I believe, should be. Be first and 15 from the, uh, It'll be from a their own 54-yard line. Repeat the down. Here comes the Colts, Varpio talking to Melchiori. They're going over the play. Varpio under center. And around the Melchiori. A little bit of confusion in the backfield ends up in the hands of Melchiori. He's Real. brought down behind the line of scrimmage by number 29, Chris Cormier. Real nice defensive play there by number 29, Chris Cormier. He kind of snuffed out the play. He uh, saw where it was going and immediately went into the backfield and brought down Melchiori for a loss. It's going to be second down and 16 for the Colts. Clock running down towards six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Varpio waits the snap. Back to throw. Swings it out to Manchalenko. Manchalenko's got a little bit of room. Makes, gets back, it looks like, to the Fast original line of scrimmage. Cam Williamson. It's going to be third down and 10. Down. Now, Phil's saying that's 31, not 36. It's 36, though, right? Thank you. Yeah. 56. Yeah. yeah. Austin Crowley. Number 56, Austin Cameron Crowley with the tackle. The tackle. Second down and ten. Third down and ten. Jay, what do you have on tap? You got a lot of games coming up in the next little while, or what's yeah, what's, the, what's the schedule we, look we like? We also we also stream uh, OUA TV for Algoma and uh, OCAA for uh, soccer for Sioux College. So we got two uh, two soccer games with Algoma tomorrow, then two high school games tomorrow night, and Saturday we have uh, two Sioux College soccer, then a core good hard tackle. Cor with the keeper. Cor Cor hosting Northern Excellent uh, tackle, Huron Heights and Sunday on Sunday. So yeah, right. busy weekend. That's a busy weekend for sure. Sorry, 18. So because Varpio uh, uh, drops back to pass, and he, and he doesn't seem to open. Welcome. He chooses to run, and another big defensive play by number 18, Nicholas Loudit. Sets up fourth and long. Makes it fourth and long as the Wolverines continue to hang in this game. As Cora will punt, it appears. And it's something like you, you were talking about getting used to for going from two practices a week to, to every day. It's... But for two years, we almost had nothing. Oh, I, I'm not complaining so we're, we're, about we're, that. We're just not used to it, right? Yeah, we're not used to it. It's exactly right. And I'm old, Jay, as you know. So, Just had a birthday, didn't you? Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. So they, they snap it directly to Hyam. He's got some room as he decides to they decide to go for a little Nathan fake Hyam. here. And Hyam, Hyam goes around the, the left side and gets the first down. Gets the first down and then some. Nice run, nice little play there. Nicholas allowed it. Eventually, with the tackle, that sets up another first you down. You just 39 again? What's that? You just 39 again? Yeah, 49 yeah. again, actually. 49 yeah, again? Yeah, the fifth, the fifth time I'm 49. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And they say it's not how how old you are, it's how you feel. So I'm, so that means I'm old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it means I'm probably catching up to my yeah. dad in the way I feel. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Oh, well. 
What are you going to do? We're still here. And, and we're talking football, and like I say, your dad, Len, has been involved for years. How's, how's he doing? Ah, he's doing okay. He's moving around a little slowly. He hasn't been, made it, been able to make it out to the field yet this year, but uh, – yeah, he, he's still interested. He's still watch, cheering for his Lions every Sunday, and uh, they they look a little better, so that makes him a little happier. Does he get to watch his grandson on game day? Uh, he, if, I think if Dylan played yeah, a little uh, bit more, more yeah, he would watch it, but here. since he doesn't play, he'd, uh, I don't think it's worth his Coach time for us to go there and set it up for him. So uh, third quarter. He follows and asks and talks to him about it. So Number four, Zane Murdoch's in at quarterback. Uh, he's uh, been a long-time quarterback in the Sioux Minor system, uh, Good athlete, good player. He comes from a good family too, so always nice to see the good boys do well here. And that's one thing with uh, with Cora, with junior or senior, is they got depth at, at the QB level. Absolutely, absolutely. Inside handoff there, not much of a gain. I mean, quarterback and Cora is a little bit, little bit different. Uh, they they run their system. You know, you, you uh, Wayne. You gotta know. You gotta really know what you're doing. And, uh, so they got a lot of learning, and they they, so they all do a good job. Ten. It's gonna be second down and ten for the Colts. They're on the the uh, Wolverine 34 yard line. It's actually be second and 12. Murdoch with the handoff as they do a little crisscross play. It ends up in Melchiori's hands, and he breaks the tackle. He's going to sprint to the end zone. There is a flag down, though. We do have a flag on the play. Flag looks like it's possibly in the area of holding. Run for Melchiori. That would be my guess. There's two flags. Cora's acting like they're not too happy, too, so. No, maybe not. No? No, it looks like it's against the Wolverines. Can't see the signal, but it is against the Wolverines. That was a 28-yard run. Yeah, nice run by Melchior. That's his second touchdown of the game. He's had a nice game, caught a couple passes. Cougley added a kick the extra point. At the end of the game, Jay will have our... uh, our, uh, Players of the game, and you want to talk uh, quickly about the player of the game sponsors and uh, what they what they do? Yeah, player of the game sponsors. Um, Domino's stepped up again for their second straight year. Oh, the extra point is blocked, so it's thirty-three to seven for the Colts. Sorry, Jay. Was blocked. So Tempted Domino's no stepped up again. So we we Domino's is giving a, a pizza, a medium pizza to each team. Player of the game. And Team Essentials uh, on second line have uh, stepped up and uh, provided a player of the game T-shirt for each uh, player that uh, we select. That's awesome. And those, those are two people that do a lot of good stuff for the community. I know Domino's always tries to get involved. And uh, I know Vince very well and the folks at uh, Team Essentials. They do a lot of stuff, and they, they really try to help uh, all, all, the, all the, the groups out. And I'm glad to see their out sponsor. Of course, Vince's son, uh, Marcus, plays for me. He's one of our, uh, one of our top linemen. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, good, they're good community people. Yeah, and it's something that, again, it's, uh, they're expanding. They're uh, moving buildings yeah. to next door across the parking lot. So it's something that really involved the community, the PUE, high school. Yep. Um, they're, they're trying to do other things with other, not just, I know they do, they have over 40 schools in the, uh, the public system also that they also do for clothing-wise. So they're really yeah, involved in great new community. And, and a lot of the stuff that um, I think almost everything they do is, is, is not just to make money. They do it, they do it to, uh, to help people out and they give, they give back to the community and, uh, you know, that's why, and they're good people. So and that promote, doesn't surprise me. Promoting sports and just promoting the community overall. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they'll kick off from the white pines 50. There's a couple penalties on the, uh, on the Melchiori touchdown run. So the, a little bit of a short kick here. Ball's bouncing around, and it's recovered by the Cora Colts. It's picked up by number 86, Caden oh. Pattery. Then White Pines picked it up again. Bounced off the core player had it, bounced off of him, and then... Yeah, so he ends up fumbling after, and then that'll be White Pines' ball. A little bit of a strange they play there as they, they, they go with the short kick. It's picked up by 86, Caden Pattery. Uh, and then he fumbles and, and it's recovered, recovered by, by the White Pines Wolverines. Back to where it's supposed to be. 
Exactly. Pick 29, yeah. Chris Cormier with the fumble recovery. And then, Jay, do you want to talk a little bit about your your other sponsors you have on board? Yeah, or, uh, we, we have uh, uh, Trevor Zachary, who, Zachary, who's with the Marconi Club in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, they, they've came on as, as a partner. Um, Country 104 and KISS uh, 100.5. Um, Elite uh, 8 Basketball, Ryan Lillington. He does some yeah. work with, with yeah. us with announcing, too, so... A little bit of room here around the right side, and there goes Loudit. He's being hunt, ch chased down Number by Dickinson, and Loudit goes for about 50 about yards 50 down yard the right run, side. Yard run. Real nice run, real nice touchdown Eventually saving tackle by there by Dickinson. Hunter Dickinson. And, uh, Beautiful run for White Pines. White Pines, well, Wolverine's offense has really come to life here in the second half. Boy, oh boy, what a difference. And like we were saying before, it's a uh, when it comes to football, there's a lot of time. Oh, yeah, there is a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. First absolutely. and 10 from the core of 35. So it's 33-7 to 7 here as the clock ticks down towards two minutes left in the third quarter. A little bit of a shovel pass there to Adam Hassan, who's very fast. He goes around the left side, breaks a tackle, runs over another guy. Adam Eventually he's brought down by number 87, Aiden Wunsch. Gain of 15 on the play. Yards. And it's going to be first down and 10 for the Wolverines on the Colts 20. Mixed in Blair. And you saw him with that, with that stride. If he had one more Corn. stride, I think he would have been gone. Yeah, he's a he's a fast, powerful guy. He's been, been very, very impressive. First and 10 from the 20. And it does look like the core Colts still have a lot of starters in on offense. And the uh, White Pines Wolverines are still moving the ball. So... Uh, like I said, hats off to them. I mean, it looks like really all the starters are out there. It's hard. I don't so know making, for sure. Making Coach Bernabucci a little worried. Probably isn't too happy with the uh, what's going on now, but Pine waiting for the snap. Goes back to the O. He does a little fake to Hassan and keeps it himself. He breaks a couple tackles, gets down inside the 15. Five-yard run on the play makes it second down and five. Nice little fake to Hassan. Kevin Goodship was so in on the 19, tackle. Garen the Pine. Or sorry. Garen Pine. Another nice tackle by the big man, number 75, Ken Goodship. He's had a nice game. He's second down and five. And they do, the Colts have We're a man say down. We're going to Blair in on the tackle. Good for about five yards. It'll be second and five. We do have an injured player. Jay, and you, and you start your basketball coverage last night? The, started the, the girls' with, basketball? Started with uh, Sapir Heights and, um, and Cora. Uh-huh. Um, um, right in the Linton and Tony Bonifero did the announcing and Judy uh, Noah, uh, uh, grade 10 at uh, Cora, had over 10 steals. Oh, yeah. And Tony, eh? wow. Tony and Ryan said they can't remember in high school basketball at any level to have a player at 10 steals in one game. That's quite a few. And then Ashley no Noble with Superior Heights had uh, 28 points against White Pines. That's nice. That's nice. So yeah. So you, so you have a full schedule of that uh, plan, right, Jay? Yep. It, we're, we're, yep. We're looking at uh, doing – for volleyball, boys basketball, girls basketball, we're doing looking to do at least ten games of each. Um, then we also do um, boys basketball, and then football. We're gonna probably have coverage every game, so over twenty games of uh, high school football for streaming this year. That's awesome. And I mean, one one thing, Jay, I'll say you, is you do a lot of good stuff too for the community. A lot of people that can't make it out to the field, uh, you provide that coverage for them, and, and that's appreciated. And that's why. I try to come and help you out as much as I can. I can't always be here during football season, but uh, I know we appreciate the the coverage that you provide. Well, thank you, and it's and a lot of being in the north. Oof. There's Loudon on the carry, and he's uh, bulldozed by number seventy five that we just talked Loudon about, Ken Goodship. By seventy five. So it's gonna be third and six. And, Ken Goodship. And it's one thing you know because you have your son who who's playing at Bishops, and being out of town is. Being in Northern Ontario, there's a lot of family members who don't live in in the North that when when they are streamed, absolutely, family members can watch absolutely. It, right? And I know, like I know, for Third example, uh, last Friday night, uh, the, my, my son was away at university and he, and he watched our game on your uh, on your service, and uh, he, he I got to hear how bad we were from him, so <laughs> that was really good. Then here comes the son again, speeding his way around the left side. He gets down close to first down yardage, not quite though. Dickinson on the again tackle. A good hard run. Stop by 23 Dickinson. That's the end of the third quarter. I think there'll be one more play in this quarter. I'll set quarter. up fourth and six. Or and it's something like for White Pines. With streaming, we we have here on Heights this weekend from Barry, so we're going to be streaming that game with Cora. 
but but also when it comes to talking about out of town and being in the north is for football you guys have game footage for the teams a lot of other sports don't do it yes so even for recruitment absolutely um, they can they can uh they can see footage right looks like white pine's going for it definitely pine back to pass Little swing pass out here, broken up nicely. Passing Real James nice number defensive 51. play by number 89, Jackson Hiltz. Steve De Nolan. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Colts when we start the fourth quarter. Added away by number 89, Jackson Hiltz. Cor Cor will take over on downs. Sorry. As the teams change ends here, we got a little break in the action. Heading down to the start of the fourth quarter. And that's something, again, I'll just mention on some of our sponsors while they're moving ends is Barconi Culture Event Center, GFL Memorial Gardens, um, Country 104, Team Essentials, the Goma District School Board, and we also, uh, usually on location, uh, we have Bob Davies who does workless, uh, countless hours of work uh, with us volunteer for uh, covering photos. But tonight he, uh, I think tonight is, um, he's covering a concert somewhere in town. Oh, yeah, eh? Yeah, and I never, I never actually commented. When you mentioned the Marconi, they do a lot of good things too. And uh, Trevor's a great guy in the community. We, I know Bono talked about him a little bit last week. But uh, good guy, good friend, and uh, he's, I'm glad he's aboard too. So the Colts take over first down and 10. There's the handoff there. Looks like 36, Manchelenko. Hard to tell. They're a little bit far down the field. Maybe it's 31, Williamson. Yeah, Williamson with the yeah. carry. And then Marconi, like to say, Trevor, Trevor Zachary's over there now. And 29, Chris Cormier in on the tackle. And Run was good for eight or nine During COVID yards, again, we, second down and short. nobody could go to the Marconi, but Trevor took it over during uh, COVID. And it's really, really bringing it back to what the Marconi used to be. Yeah, absolutely. We had, I went to the Sioux Minor Banquets last week. And I know Bono had mentioned that too. And uh, I had my 14 or 15 meatballs, and uh, <laughs> they were as good as, as good as expected. So there's a handoff inside. Very hard run up the middle. Melchiori on the carry. He's had a really, really good game. Now talking, oh, I know, I know we're at carry. football, but have you been to the Marconi to play bocce? I have not yet. No, my, my wife knows a little bit about it. She actually did a little bit of work there when she, uh, in, during by, the COVID uh, time, she did some takeout work. Marines. And uh, she said it looked like it was a lot of fun. So I might have to check it out. Have you checked it out, Jay? I've been down there to check out, like you say, I don't know if it's called the court or what it's called, but I've been down there to look at it. But, no, it's, uh, it's a game probably too stressful for me. Yeah. It would be probably too tiring for us at Jay at our <laughs> age, so. Uh, you only ro if you got four people, you only have to stay at one end. Oh, so. there you go. That was perfect yeah. then. Also, a little bit of a broken play there on the end around the the ball carrier falls. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. AJ, AJ Cuchamilio. With the carry, he's tripped up. He's Loss right on the play there because second down and seventeen. Arthur Vincent. That's Arthur Vincent with the carry. He's had a strong game. Second, looks like about twenty for the Colts. Yeah, second and 20, actually, as Phil points out to us on the uh, public address system. Murdoch still in a quarterback for the uh, Cora Colts. Uh, he's going to throw here, and he finds number 21. Number four, Zane Murdoch. Finds number 21. Nice little roll Hunter up pass to number 21. Diz Ludi, the Lu Hunter Zilliams. Diz, well, I can't say that one. The Zilliams. The Zilliams, sir. Sorry, folks. The Zilliams. Hunter the Zilliams. We apologize. Loud it in on the tackle for White Pines. Loud it with another tackle. Uh, Jay, I don't want to tip my uh, my hat, but uh, my hand, but uh, Loud it's a good candidate for the White Pines Wolverines uh, player, player of the, the game, game, I think, yeah. I mean, on Cora's side, they've had a lot of strong performances. You know, you can always look at Gazzetti. I think Peyton Malcuri has had a really strong game. Hunter Dickinson, as usual. Nathan Hyam, as usual. 
So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get those out pretty soon. Another one I'd say on the line would be uh, Goodship. Yeah, Goodship's made some nice plays too, the big man. There's a little hitch pass there to Marquis Strawbridge, and he heads around to the right side, breaking a couple tackles, and he, he, he gets looks like he turns it back close to the, the first green. down yardage. Strawbridge has had an outstanding game as well. Tackle by number 51, Steve Nolan. And with Strawbridge's height, must must help with the QB to when you're going oh, to the yeah, air to go into yeah, Strawbridge. Yeah, it's a little bit of an easier target to find, right? A little more room, and you can see him all the time. Absolutely. It's definitely a huge advantage. And he can catch, too. Second so. and one for Cora from the 46-yard line. And the second half really hasn't reflected the score of the game. At no, it hasn't. seven has it. No, it hasn't. No, I think the Wolverines have done a nice job of holding, them, uh, holding in this game. Good hard run. There's the handoff there. I believe that's 34. Roger Vincent in on the tackle. 34, A.J. Cochimilio on the carry, I believe. Yep. Sorry, A.J. Cochimilio with the carry. Good right. for about five yards and a first down. Another tackle by Arthur Vincent, who's had a nice game. I said that last time, too, so good job by him. So it's first down and 10 for the Cora Colts on their own 50. Clock ticking down Just towards 7.30 left in the first half. Junior first half, senior, fourth quarter, Jay. <laughs> and like, and and just like Phil, Phil was announcing about warm day the games Sabre tomorrow, but we will be streaming the games tomorrow. Yeah. At the junior senior level. Good job by Murdoch to Murdoch. avoid the sack. He flips it out to number Almost 31, Williamson. It's uh, incomplete. Pass intended Coverage on the play by one. number eight, uh, Neshoba Moore, who's back and healthy. So that's Cam good to Williamson. see. Shoba was helped off in the, at halftime, and uh, he's back, so that's really good to see. So what should we s s expect out of your, uh, your nights tomorrow night, Jim? Hopefully a better start. That's what's my main main concern right now. We started a little better than we did uh, on uh, last Friday, but, uh, yeah, right, we'll see what we got. Um, you know, we have a lot of guys are sick. I think everybody does, though, so but we should be okay for tomorrow. There's Williamson around the right side. Not much room there, and he brought down for a carry. short loss. It's going to be third down and 12. And Jay, what do you have a plan Steven for the uh, the hockey tackle. season this year? Do you have they're going to be doing Looks the high like school games or? Uh, yeah, we're doing we're we're, we're doing third and eleven. We're doing the high school Pretty games. Cool. We're doing a little bit of work with the Thunderbirds, Sioux Thunderbirds, more. They're using our equipment right now, and the reason is is just trying to fit them into our schedule to to do more is uh, a little bit hard right now. So yeah, and we'll try to pick up some other things here and there, right, when we can. Oh, well, Skate Ontario contacted me today. I got to get back to them next week about figure skating. And Jim, I know you're going to be perfect for that commentating. Well, I was a, a heck of a figure skater in my day, so. Murdoch, nice little pass to Cochamilio. He gets downfield for about 20 yards. So quarterback Zane and Murdoch finds uh, A.J. Cachamelio in the flats. He makes a nice run, speeds He's down the sidelines for about 22 Corby yards. He'll be first down and 10 for the Colts on the Wolverine 39-yard line, five and a half minutes left in the game. So that figure skiing, was that in your slim days, Jim? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 I was the, I was a hefty uh, figure skater. I look good in the first costume. Ted Gore from the white Toe pick. 39. Yeah. 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 No, I know nothing about uh, figure skating, but uh, anything to help out. And we're they work hard, I tell you that. that. That I know, that the girls that figure skate and the guys that figure skate, they work hard. And we're going to try to do some, like, say, if, oh, friends of uh, both of ours, but a good friend of yours, we're going to try to do some Dom DeLuca's. <laughs> like Malky Uri with Dom the DeLuca's Bantam games also. Yeah, That's Dom with the, the first year Bantams this year, so we'll see how he does. Uh, a little bit of a change for him. We're going to give it to... 29, Cormier. This looks like Melchiori goes straight ahead there and There's gets two, makes it second here. down and eight. He's brought down by number 29, Chris Cormier. Clock ticking down towards 4.30 left in this match. That's been a good performance by the White Pines Wolverines. They'd be happy with the score of 33-7. I know uh, they're probably standing there saying, oh, I hope they don't score again because you don't really want to give up a 40 spot. But I'm just trying to guess how they're thinking over there. So. Again, if you can just keep it two points off the board, they 
they get the full game instead of straight. Yeah, they've kept, they've kept the full game. Yeah. Gets a few yards. There's Williamson on the carry. He gets down Cormier inside the 35. The Another tackle by Chris Cormier, who had a strong game. Yeah, it's a help. Number 18, Nicholas Lowen. Good for three or four Third yards. down and Third five down. from the 33-yard line. And and it's hard with White Pines when you're looking at 20, 29, 30 pl players too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, look at look at the two benches. Jay, look at the difference uh, in, uh, in how many guys are on each sideline. It's almost two to one, right? Might even be two to one. So Murdoch takes the snap. He gives the ball inside. Short gain on the play Boy, by Mel Curie. Gets tripped up before, uh, Looks like he gets to about the 32. Two or three yards. It'll be fourth and three. J.D. JD Boyer pull, kind of brings him the down. Referee setting up the ball. Yeah, number 32, J.D. Boyer with a nice play. J.D. Boyer in on the tackle for White Pines. That sets up fourth and about three yards. Fourth and three here coming up as we tick down towards the third three-minute warning. Three minute warning. Here we go. Murdoch under center. Quarterback sneak and he's second Good effort. Second effort, he's going to get the first down as he gets down to the 25 yard line. We're under three minutes left now. Looks like Murdoch kept it for the keeper. Tackle by Cormier. And that'll be the three minute warning. First and 10, Cora from the 31 yard line. Sorry, Jay, it looks like yards. fall has arrived, uh, judging by the weather, and I look tomorrow's kind of similar. So, But. Here in Sault Ste. Marie and in the north, we could have cold today, tomorrow, and the weekend could be 25 degrees again. Absolutely, absolutely. But the leaves haven't even really started changing yet. No, they haven't. Murdoch again. Inside handoff. No, he had it, kept it. To throw it. And the Wolverines look like... 43, Arthur oh, no. Vincent steals <laughs> the ball, or strips the ball. Nice play by Mercury to recover After the fumble. After all is said and done, it's recovered, I think, again by Cora. Thank you. So a loss of 10 on the play makes it second down and 20. Melchiori ends up picking the ball back up. And bounced out of two, white different, two different White Pines players' hands and back into the Cora hand. Yeah, I mean, lots of times the good teams get the breaks too, That'll right? That'll set up second and about 20 for Cora. And that's somewhere, instead of trying to pick it up, sometimes it's just better to fall on. Yeah, right? I think Melchiori did a real good job there. He's had a really good game. For especially for a grade nine guy, uh, I think Jay, I, I can say with comfort that the the player of the game for me for White Pines Wolverines is going to be Nick, Nicholas Loud at number eighteen. I think that uh, he's you know his kick returns are really good. He's been really good on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, and uh, his athleticism as, as his athleticism has really shown tonight. So I think we'll go with Loud at there. Uh, you know, Jay, I don't know what you think about for the core Colts. I've liked Malcuri. You mentioned Goodship. Uh, he's had a strong game. It's That'll nice, nice to give it to the big guys repeat, sometimes, repeat especially when there's a pizza involved. Uh, so what I wanna, you can pick that one, Jay. I think Goodship would be my choice for uh, for that one. Again, you don't see that a lot of times the big guys get the, the recognition. Yeah, he's had a strong game. I agree with you. So we'll go, we'll go with uh, 75, Ken uh, Goodship for the player of the Don't game for the core Colts. And uh, number uh, 18, Nicholas Loudon for the White the Pines Wolverines. Scrimmage. It's going to be third down and 10 here with two minutes left in the game. Third and 11. 43, Arthur Vincent in on the tackle. Clock running. Well, it's supposed to be anyways. No, it is. We're under two minutes. Jay, if you want, again, one well, the players of the game are going to be uh, Nicholas Loudon and uh, Ken Goodship. If you want to go over again what these players receive from their from your sponsors. So yeah, so e each player receives a, a medium pizza from Domino's um, in the East End or the West Murdoch. End, nice and pass. a Team Essentials uh, T-shirt. Awesome. Looks like number nineteen, Tristan Cote. So Zane Murdoch rolls out and finds number nineteen, Tristan Cote, open around the. Right sideline, and it's another first down for the White Pines Wolverines. It'll be first down and 10 from, uh, for the core Colts on the White Pines 15. One thirty-eight and counting left in this ball game. Jacob Day in on the tackle. Murdoch under center.
Keeper, about, and he's brought. Oh, confusion. he breaks the tackle. He makes a nice play. Got some breaks room. Breaks a few tackles. Gets down Eventually inside the 10 to the 6. Nice play by Zane Murdoch. He's brought down by Neshoba Moore Touchdown on the 6 Zane yard tackle. line as we head towards a minute left in the game. Good for a few yards. That'll set up second down. And about one. Let's see what the Colts do here. Maybe try to get somebody a little different. Uh, got a touchdown here. Tried to spread out the ball a little bit. Yep, and they've done a good job of that. Really good job of that. They always do, though. Now tomorrow's games we will we'll be streaming. Uh, Superior Heights and St. Mary's. Uh, it'll be 4:45. And uh, 7 p.m. for the senior game, right? Yeah, 7, 7.30. Or 7.30, my 7 apologies. 7.30 for the senior game, yeah. So by then, with the sun really gone down, it should be cool. Yeah, day. it should be really cool. I'm going to have to dress accordingly. <laughs> Skidoo suit. <laughs> and if, if, if Tony Bonifero was here, it'd be shorts and, uh, and sandals. Flip-flops, so. yep, yeah. Flip-flops, yep. Absolutely. There was He's cold, though. He just doesn't want to admit it. There was a flag on the play there. Yeah, time count violation. Time clock violation against Cora. So inside three minutes, it's a loss of down. So it'll be third down and one from the uh, six-yard line. Murdoch's going to take a knee. Let the clock tick down. I don't think there's enough time for them to actually do this. But there's not enough time for them to do this, actually. Clock will run down to about 12 seconds, and they'll take another knee, and I think White Pines Wolverines will have a play unless they just decide to run it right out, which they might. He should have to snap it by 12 seconds, but we'll see. They might let him go. So he snaps the ball. There's 9.1 seconds left. Murdoch takes another knee. And the Wolverines will take over first and 10. And I, I think, unless the downs are wrong, I don't know. Jay. No, I think, not sure. Yeah, I think they're moving the sticks to. Yeah, well, White Pines is going to run a play now. So, oh now no, they're running the clock. It. So that's yeah, they're just going to run the clock out. It's thirty-three-seven final, but it ended up to be only seven-seven in the second half yeah. of the game. Yeah, will run out, ladies and gentlemen. That's good second half, game. good performance by the White Pines Wolverines. They'll be happy. Score. Just uh, final score 33 7. Heights. Thanks, folks. I apologize Junior that I was here a little bit sick, but uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you here once again to enjoy some terrific.